But one of the things they're actually trying to accomplish here is print on your brain so it won't lock up in an emergency situation that this fellow's pointing a gun at you. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com where you can find real firepower online. Old Man Winter has driven us inside and we've been lucky enough today to be able to use the indoor range at our good friends from the Buffalo Trading Company. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about target selection for your pistol training. I spent a lot of time doing some coaching with people always around the handgun and it amazes me some of the targets that are selected and the reasons why they're selected really remain unknown even to the purchaser. So what I mean by that is this, while you're out shopping for targets, whether it's online or in the store, try to select a target that has some anatomical significance. And what I mean by that is, in general, what you want is to be able to cover all of your shots in a five and a half inch circle, which is roughly the size of a human hand. If you wander off and select some targets that are solely designed for fun, what actually happens is it lowers your standards of accuracy. Behind me, you'll see all different types of targets. And later on in the video, we're going to discuss some basic types. And that's what we show you is by no means all of them. The amount of targets out there are actually pretty staggering. Some of them quite good and some of them quite bad. While you're training and you find it difficult to perhaps achieve the standards of accuracy we're going to discuss later on, it's okay. Everybody starts somewhere and everybody does miss. Anybody that tells you they don't is either one, an extremely accomplished sh shooter or not telling the truth. What we're after is some standards and some challenge that makes you get better based on the target you select. And as we go through, I think you're going to find sometimes they look right, but aren't quite right. And choosing the right target from the get go will actually make you a better shooter. As we discussed earlier, when we make a target selection, we have to choose one that has some anatomical significance. And the goal we're going for is roughly a five and a half inch spread to the bullseye or the impact area. In a little bit, we'll talk about the ocular zone here. If you can picture a five and a half inch spread right in the center of your chest, it's roughly the size of an adult male's hand. Any rounds that impact outside of that are not necessarily in a vital enough area to end the fight quickly. And what we're essentially trying to do is sort of unplug the hydraulics. Now, you'll notice the gray, this is an old FBI style target. They currently use one called the QIT-99, which is different shading. But one of the downsides to using this sort of target is, in theory, any impact in the gray is just as valuable, meaning you don't lose points as any shot here or here. That's an obvious problem for a shooter. Make no mistake about it. These targets have this zone for a reason. If you'll notice, we are in fact roughly, this one here is six and a half inches long, but the width is considerably shorter at four. This is an impact zone that ends fights quickly. Anything outside of there, the shooter needs to try and hone their skills and eliminate those close, but in my opinion, not close enough shots. So even though if you were shooting the FBI qual, this is in theory as good as this, reality for everyday carry personnel, it's absolutely not, not acceptable. Now, real quick, this is an interesting zone here called the ocular zone. You could theorize that, especially when you're talking about headshots, that this and this and this all would work quite quickly. They, in fact, do not turn off the computer with a sufficient enough speed to end fights quickly. If you're an internet research person, look at a fellow named Lance Thomas, who was involved in several shootouts while he was running his jewelry repair store in LA City. He had been in multiple gunfights with multiple assailants. He himself was actually shot through the neck in one of those encounters and was released from the hospital that day. 
Interestingly enough, in his first encounter, he shot a would-be armed robber with a 38 caliber revolver in the face, and that fellow also lived. It is not necessarily true that anything out of the ocular zone is going to neutralize the target quickly. Yes, I'm sure it'll slow them down. Most shots to the face are probably going to have that effect. However, both of those people lived and continued the fight. Only shots when we're talking about the neck up in the ocular zone should be acceptable. Obviously, things never work out on the range as well as we hope. So what the whole point is to strive to get all of them here and here during your training session. At first glance, it would appear that these two targets are fairly similar. The scoring rings are roughly the same shape, actually made by the same company. But there's actually a problem with this when you select the target if you don't understand exactly what's going on with the target. Notice I have my little tape measure here. You have a number nine scoring ring, and of course the 10 ring is the bullseye. Notice how much different in size they are. If you measure the nine rings, this one is well in excess at seven inches long and five and a half inches wide. This is an excessively large bullseye. Now, if we move over here, you'll notice though not circular, it is four by five and a half. In my humble opinion, if we were going to select a target, regardless of the range we were working at, this is a preferable target because any impact in the nine would effectively neutralize a fight quickly. The downside for shooters is this. Yes, this is a more forgiving target, especially if I move it back to the 50 foot line. Some people train it up to 25 yards. Yeah, it's easier to score tens and nines here. The reality is on the street, that five and a half inch bullseye doesn't change regardless of the distance. They all must go here. So bear in mind, I don't want people to get the idea that if I choose an easy target and look, I'm hitting this all day, that may not necessarily end fights quickly when you need them to as an everyday carry person. Our third target type is this one from Easy Aim. I really, really like this target for a couple of reasons. I do a lot of training on a drill called the five yard roundup, which you'll see in a later video. This guy right here, you'll notice, is well within our five and a half inch sort of circular bullseye to end fights quickly. And the eight ring is kind of nice in that it's actually eight inches long and six inches wide. To do the five yard roundup, anything that impacts in an eight inch circle would count. So we can use this target not only for that drill, but many others, including the wizard we'll see later on. And another huge advantage I think this target has is the smaller ocular window. At any distance, this becomes a challenge, especially if you're working from the holster with a shot timer. It makes the shooter present the gun onto the target efficiently and makes you take the extra pause to actually record a hit in the ocular window. Really like this target, very inexpensive as well, and you can do a lot of good things with it. And it does have, as we talk, anatomical significance. When I've taken pistol classes in the past, when the B8 style target comes out, you can hear an audible groan from the students. These are very humbling little guys for a variety of reasons. But before you hit don't like at home, I realize that this is not exactly a B8 target. And that's the one of the reasons why I chose these. If your target is truly a B8 target, it will have a five and a half inch circular bullseye and the eight ring is actually eight inches. That may or, not, may or may not be a coincidence based on who you ask, but this looks right. This is in fact what's called an SR1C repair center target from law enforcement targets. And if you measure this guy out, it's actually bigger by almost an inch. That's a huge difference, especially when the target is supposed to be used at 25 yards. So we have incorrect 
And of course, your eight ring is also enlarged. So it looks right, but this is in fact not a B8 target. Yes, you could use it for one, as long as you keep in mind, you can't be out here on the edges and still pass certain drills. This one over here, strangely enough, completely different scoring system, of course, is, as long as we're referring to the orange bullseye, five and a half inches. But notice, once again, as we move out, it is in fact smaller in green, but much larger in white. These will all work, provided that while we're training and going through our session, we bear in mind only impacts in orange are preferable. If that's too much of a challenge, the shooter can, one, move the target closer, slow the time down if you're shooting with a shot timer, or simply continue to train until we have impacts in orange only. Truly be accountable for your shots, and that starts on the range. If you're not accountable for your shots on the range, it's going to be very difficult for you to account for them in a dangerous situation. Now we've all seen targets like this, whether it's on your local shooting range or perhaps in one of the big box stars. They're fun, they splatter, and let's be honest, who doesn't want to kill zombies? But I don't find that they have a ton of anatomical significance unless the shooter is disciplined enough to pick a smallish spot on the target. I'm not a fan of these, they're a good way to get people interested in shooting and perhaps have a little fun from time to time, but absolutely should not be the mainstay of your target diet. I'm sure we've all seen this type of target before. This is called the bad guy. Another variation of the bad guy is he'll be standing behind a good guy, sort of like using them as a shield, and the shooter's challenge is, of course, to only shoot the bad guy. There's actually law enforcement drills around that type of thing. But one of the things they're actually trying to accomplish here is print on your brain so it won't lock up in an emergency situation that this fellow's pointing a gun at you. The way your memory works is it actually takes slides of things, and as long as your brain has a slide to reference, it might in fact not be paralyzed by, oh my goodness, there's a guy pointing a gun at me. That's the real point of all of this. I wouldn't recommend in most cases that you try to pull your gun out after somebody's already pointing one at you. That's likely not to go well for you. But one of the other things I really like about this target is this. It doesn't come with a bullseye zone. People don't typically leave their house with a bullseye zone on their color or clothes either. So you must pick the spot between nipple line to nipple line that magic line running center axis and get a bullet to impact into that area, you must sort of pick the zipper, so to speak. Or this narrow ocular window right here is the only thing that will suffice. Shooting them in the ear does not work. So what actually happens as you're using this type of target is you have to narrow your focus, come off of the eyes and pick the spot which does in fact take some practice. It's actually remarkably difficult to transition to this target if your entire shooting career, you've always used a bullseye. It's more difficult than people think. And I highly recommend using this type of target from time to time just because of that alone. Over the recent weeks, I've become a big fan of a guy named Chuck Pressburg. He's all over the internet and I really like his philosophy as far as no fail or complete accountability for everything that leaves the muzzle of your gun. Sometimes I don't think people spend enough time thinking about the consequences of carrying the gun and perhaps missing a shot. Selecting the right target, B8 style or any other, is the first step towards 100% accountability because we are quickly entering an age where that is the demand. No longer will society put up with armed citizens flinging bullets all over, landing wherever they may. Carrying a gun is an awesome responsibility, and we must have a focus on that while we train, and only targets with anatomical significance should be used, and we would certainly try to strive 
to 100% accountability related to accuracy. If you choose the right target, you're on your way.